In this video, we want to work through some Hardy-Weinberg practice problems using the formulas that I introduced in the uh, video previous to this. So remember that uh, there are two equations. If we assume that the population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, or um, at least close enough that we can assume that it's in equilibrium, then we can work with these two equations. Um, and we have to remember what these terms refer to. Students who usually have trouble using these equations uh, uh, have trouble because they forget what the terms refer to. So let's review that, and then I'll try as I work through three sample problems in this video, I'll be constantly referring back to these terms. So we can work with the equation p plus q equals 1, and what p and q refer to is not organisms, but just the general frequency of each allele in the overall population gene pool. So P would be the overall frequency of the dominant allele. Remember that we write these as decimals, not as percentages. Uh, and Q would be the recessive allele frequency. So we'll make sure you know what that means with some of what we cover um, in some practice problems. If you're ever given organisms, that's usually where we start. We can't directly measure P and Q generally unless we somehow are able to count all of the alleles that every organism possesses. So usually we don't start with a knowledge of the allele frequencies. We usually can look at organisms and get some information there. So P squared would refer to the frequency of organisms that are homozygous dominant in genotype. 2PQ it would be a term referring to how many organisms are heterozygous in genotype. And Q squared, uh, what I'm going to refer to as the most important term when working with these equations, is the frequency of organisms who are homozygous recessive. That's usually the term that we want to get to, because we usually can work with Q squared to get Q. Once we can get Q, we can get P. And if we have P, Q, and Q squared, we can get anything else that we need. Um, and Q squared is frequently easy to get to because we can look at how many organisms show the recessive phenotype. And if you show the recessive phenotype for a simple trait, that must mean that you're homozygous recessive in genotype. So let's work through some examples, and we'll show how this is applied. So let's say we have a population of mice that are in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Let's say that we're able to count that about 16% of organisms in the population are indeed homozygous recessive, because they show the recessive phenotype. So um, what if we wanted to know what percent of them are homozygous dominant in genotype then? So let's kind of break up this word problem a little bit, and let's just start to apply some of the terms that we can use. Um, so what are we given in this equation? We're given that 16% of the organisms are homozygous recessive. Remember, that really refers to the term Q squared. So we're given Q squared, and we're, what are we trying to find? We're trying to find what percent of organisms are homozygous dominant. Um, that would be the term P squared. So ultimately, we're given Q squared, and we'd like to get to P squared. So how can we do that? Well, um, if we know that uh, Q squared is equal to 16%, um, and again, we don't want to write it in, in terms of a percentage. We want to write it in decimal form. Um, we can start there. We know that Q squared is equal to 0 0.16. Um, so what can we do with that term? Well, we could square root it. Um, so we know that Q would simply be the square root of 0 0.16. As it turns out, that is actually a perfect square in decimals, um, but you are allowed to use a calculator now on the AP Biology test. So please put that in your calculator if you're not sure. Um, as it turns out, the square root of 0 0.16 is 0 0.40. Um, it's not 0 0.04, so do this in your calculator if you need to. Um, and if we know Q, then we can easily find P, because we know from our first equation that P and Q have to add up to be 1. And so we know that if Q is 0 0.40, whoops, I did that wrong, let's add that. If uh, P plus 0 0.40 equals 1, then I know that P is simply 1 minus 0.4. Um, so I know that P has to be 0.6. So that means I'm almost there, because how do I get to p squared? Remember that that was my goal. I can get to p squared by simply squaring 0.6. I know that p squared is equal to 0 0.60 squared. If you don't know what that is off the top of your head, um, put it into your calculator. Make sure you see that. Um, but it is 0 0.36. So you could say that the um, dominant, uh, the homozygous dominant frequency is 0.36. That's the same thing as saying 36% of the organisms are homozygous dominant. 
Um, so that would be fine as well. Okay, um, so that's working through one simple problem. Again, to me, the key of, of working through these is thinking about what you're given and thinking about where you're trying to get to. Let's do another practice problem. So what if we know that 19% of a population shows the dominant phenotype? And I want to know what the dominant allele frequency is then. So let's think about what we're given and what we're trying to find. Um, so if I break this up again, think about what you're given, think about where you're trying to go. Um, I am given that 19% show the dominant phenotype, so let's convert that to a decimal right away, 0.19. Um, and then let's think about what that means. How could you show the dominant phenotype? A lot of students would be tempted to tell me that 0.19 equals p squared. Um, so you could be p squared and show the dominant phenotype. You could be homozygous dominant, but you could also be heterozygous and show the dominant phenotype. So what 0.19 really equals is it equals to p squared and 2pq. Those who are homozygous dominant and those who are heterozygous. Um, so that's what we're given. And then what are we trying to get to? We're trying to find what the dominant allele frequency is. Remember that that's just p. So um, it seems like that's a little bit of a challenge to start with, because if we start with the uh, given again, that 0 0.19 equals p squared plus 2pq, that might be a little bit of a stumper. Um, I can't really solve for p or q directly from what I'm given right there. Um, but fortunately, if I think back to my equation, I know that p squared plus 2pq plus q squared have to add up to be 1. In other words, I can just substitute 0.19 for this entire piece right here. 0.19 plus q squared equals 1. And I can figure out what q squared is. Um, q squared is simply 1 minus 0 0.19. Use your calculator if need be. As it turns out, that is 0 0.81. Um, so once I get q squared by itself, I can figure out what q is. Have you noticed that in these last two problems, we're able to solve things by getting to q squared, then we can figure out q, then we can figure out p, um, and we'll continue to work here. But you're going to find that oftentimes Hardy-Weinberg problems work that way. So let's just square root. Um, I know that q is simply the square root of 0 0.81. If you don't know what that is, because it is a perfect square, do it in your calculator. Um, that is 0 0.90. Um, so, and what is my ultimate goal? My ultimate goal is to find p. I know that p and q have to add up to be 1. So um, if, p, if q is 0.9, then I know that p plus 0.9 equals 1. Um, so I know that p is simply 0 0.10. Um, and that's my answer. The dominant allele frequency here is 10% or 0.1. All right, so we've worked through two problems so far. For the third one, let me try and give you a bit of a practical application. Um, so let's, um, I, I tried to look up some basic numbers for a genetic disorder that's in humans. Let's say that there are approximately 300 million Americans currently in our country. Um, so there's a little bit more than that, but I'm rounding. Um, I also looked on Wikipedia, and they um, estimate, according to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, that maybe 30 thousand Americans have cystic fibrosis currently. Um, so if I know that 30,000 people show having cystic fibrosis, and cystic fibrosis is recessive um, to not having cystic fibrosis, um, then how many people are carriers in this country? How many people are heterozygous and maybe don't know it because they just show not having the dominant phenotype, or not having cystic fibrosis, I should say? Um, so once again, let's think about this a little bit. Let's break it up. Um, I know that what I'm given is that 30,000 Americans out of the 300 a million total um, have cystic fibrosis. And what that really means then is that, uh, that I'm given Q squared right there. Q squared is 30,000 over 300 million. Um, I went ahead and calculated that out, by the way, and I got that that equals 0 0.0001. So that's the term I'm going to start with on the um, next page. Um, so I'm given that q squared equals that, and I'm interested in how many carriers there are. Um, so how many are heterozygous? And remember that that's the term 2pq. Convert your, your, your question words into the terms of the equation, and then you can think about how to get what you need. I can easily find q 
from square rooting q squared, then I can find p, and then I can find 2 times p times q. So let's see how that works. If I know that q squared equals 0 0.0001, um, then what is the square root of that? Um, that would simply be what q equals. So what is the square root of 0 0.0001? Um, I did this in my calculator already. As it turns out, it's 1 one hundredth, um, or 0 0.01. So then I can find p, because I know that p and q have to add up to be 1. So if p and 0 0.01 add up to 1, I know that p has to be 0 0.99. Okay, so I know P now, and I know Q, so um, let me just plug that in into the 2PQ. So that would simply be 2 times 0 0.99 times 0 0.01. So what does that come out to be? That comes out to be, according to my um, calculation, 0 0.0198. Um, if I were to make that a percentage, I would estimate that somewhere around just under 2% of Americans um, uh, carry cystic fibrosis. Um, and if you just wanted to see how many Americans that was, you'd want to multiply that out. So if we wanted to know what 0 0.0198 um, times 300 million is, then we would just need to calculate that. Um, when I calculated that out by multiplying, I got some, somewhere around this number, um, or maybe somewhere around 6 million Americans. So that's quite a few when you calculate it out like that. And so when you hear figures like that, you know, we estimate that maybe there are 6 million people who carry the uh, recessive allele for cystic fibrosis. Um, it might have been carried out with this kind of um, calculation. Um, this would, of course, assume that the American population as a whole is, is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So this would only be sort of an estimate because, of course, um, no population is a true Hardy-Weinberg population. Um, but this still gives us useful information. So hopefully you're able to comfortably work through the Hardy-Weinberg equations and Hardy-Weinberg practice problems. I would definitely think, based on the push for mathematical modeling and analysis, that you'll see problems like this on the AP test. So we'll continue to practice in class um, and think about the steps that we laid out here.